Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Well, um, I had mentioned in the previous video that I might ha that I may was considering doing this video yesterday, but uh, that did not happen. So today is going to be the day. Um, today, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. We will be, um, in the scriptures, we are going to be going through Luke chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12 today. I'm going to kind of do a little of an expository video. But um, before we get into that, today is Thursday, the 15th. <clears throat> a week ago today was a day that I spent look, going through emails, <laughs> which was... Which I ought to do a little bit more often, but uh, it, they just get, there's just so many that I lose track quite easily. And I have two email addresses that I work from. Uh, the one that is on the channel here, Least of All Fellowship, uh, that one. And then my main uh, email, Messaboogie2000. Uh, and I get emails on both of them. But last Thursday, going through the emails that I get, I was struck, you know, besides the normal spam and insults and rhetorical questions, you know, asking questions that people don't want an answer to, just looking to cause strife. <laughs> um, I was struck, though, at the testimonies of the brethren of how the Lord is using so many of you in whatever capacity that you are in. I, I was, it was very encouraging and comforting. You know, um, like well, my brother in Australia, brethren in uh, Scotland, and in Germany, and even in England, and Norway, and Sweden, and up in Canada, and here in my nation as well. Just how the Lord is using so many of his body in uh, what seems unto some the smallest of matters, but there is no small um, work when it comes unto witnessing unto our Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, just, it was very comforting reading all these emails that I got from so many of you, you know, like, uh, I, <laughs> for example, the one, um, from a brother in Spain that he shared with me, which was a, um, which was a very, uh, very interesting uh, testimony um, of what had what he had gone through and whatnot. But uh, but anyway, like I said, it was just very 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 comforting, very encouraging to hear just how our Lord is using so many of you in whatever capacity. That he has called you to. Um, a lot of people think right away, well, in order to be uh, doing anything uh, for the Lord, you need to be sitting in front of one of these things and uh, going through the scriptures. That's one way, yes, but you know, <coughs> as obvious, some of the best things that the Lord could use you for seem to be in what we consider the mundane. And it's in those situations when our best witness comes forth. You know what I mean? So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> but, with that said, like I said, we are going to be going through uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12, okay? And we're going to make some stops along the way. For this video, I'm going to be using two sets of scriptures. But I'm uh, going to go slow. <laughs> going to go slower than normal. Uh, to make sure that no beats get uh, skipped. That nothing gets stepped over or something like that. Okay? So, <coughs> Luke chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12, beginning at verse 1. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along in the scriptures. 
you are expected to follow me along, word by word, verse by verse. Okay? And again, I'm going to speak unto you as though you are following me along. Okay? You got it? All right. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trode one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What is a Pharisee? A Pharisee slash modern Catholic is one that takes tradition, puts tradition up here, while the scriptures are right here. Okay. A Pharisee is one who elevates tradition over the scriptures. That's Catholic. Okay. But go to Matthew chapter twenty-three. Matthew chapter twenty-three. Got my notes right here. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Our Lord says, Beware ye, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. These are the people who are the well-to-do, who are supposed to be the teachers who know these things. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Perfect example. A uh, Jesuit Catholic priest at the confession at the confession give these people these ridiculous Hail Mary full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the womb, that kind of stuff, and whatever. Okay, they uh, put all these burdens on people, but they themselves won't do any of it. Sound familiar, people? Let's continue. Why do they do that? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. You know, putting on that facade that they are religious. The Christians, remember, the Christians, they have to, they have an act that they have to keep up, you know? They have a performance that they need to stay current with, remember. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylactic trees and enlarge the borders of their garments. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. What does Rabbi mean, by the way? Let's read. Let's go ahead and read verse eight. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master. That's what Rabbi means. Even Christ. And all ye are brethren. Speaking on to the Jewish people. But where he says right here, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. What leaven is that? That they say things for you to do, and they themselves do it not. They don't practice what they preach. See. Got to beware of those, especially those who call themselves Christians and are none of the church of the living God. Gotta watch out for those types of people, brethren. Okay? <clears throat> okay? Now verses 2 and 3. 
For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Looking at verse 2, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Go to Amos. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Got to remember, Spirit of Truth, He will guide you into all truth and He will teach you all things. We'll be looking at that uh, here in a, a little later. But you got to remember, today in this dispensation, you have the Lord living within you. If you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, you are sealed. You have the Lord living within you. And the Lord who wrote the scriptures will lead you and guide you into all truth and reveal truth to you through the scriptures. Okay? You have to remember that. But, Amos chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. Amos chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I have brought, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Again, our instruction in righteousness we, the church of the living God, have been, are being brought out of Egypt. He brought us out from the world to make us his ambassadors. Okay? We're going to heaven. We're sealed. Okay? We're eternally secure. But he took us out of Egypt, the world, that we may be his ambassadors. Okay? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? Throw that around in your head a little bit. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now, the Charismatics today like to take this and uh, apply it for today. Today, there are no prophets revealing extra scriptural revelation. Okay? Okay? That, that, no. You can refer to them as the Old Testament prophets, okay? There are no prophets such as that today. There are not. Revealing extra scriptural revelation that usually contradict the scriptures okay no if someone is prophesying today it is someone of the church of the living god who has the lord within them speaking through the scriptures unto you by the holy ghost okay that's prophesying today okay old testament prophets as being ref uh, referred to here are not today no, they're not around today. Unlike what the care Catholic Pentecatholics want to tell you. You know why that is? Because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They're not dispensational. They think everything blends together. And when you blend everything together, you just get a whole pile, a whole mess out of the scriptures. Because you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Hence, the main problem with these people. Not rightly fighting okay but now <clears throat> go to Acts chapter 17 
Acts chapter 17. Okay. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verses 10, on to verse 12. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. What made these more noble than the other? In that they received the word with all readiness of mind, willing to hear. They received it. It's like, okay. But what else did they do? And searched the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Searched the scriptures daily. The Lord will do nothing, but he will reveal it Onto his prophets, okay? He won't do anything without revealing it unto his prophets, okay? The Lord will do nothing without revealing it unto us, his body, the church of the living God. Where has he revealed it? In the authorized version of the scriptures. Here we have the complete text of scripture, okay? There is no new revelation, okay? Nothing, no new revelation. And those who come up with these new revelations always contradict the scriptures. Okay? Now, the Lord can reveal to you truth within the scriptures in a certain passage of scripture. Yes! That kind of revelation, absolutely. Hence, searching the scriptures daily, whether these things are, uh, whether these things be so. Okay? But, things that go outside of the scripture and contradict, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's why our Lord says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. We know what the future holds. Okay, we know, we know that there's going to be a catching away, the redemption of the purchased possession. We know that the seven year time period referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble is coming after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up. We know that. We have it revealed unto us. Okay, now there are certain aspects of our daily lives that we do not know. Okay. And there are, through the scriptures, uh, our Lord can reveal certain things onto us within the context of scripture that applies to our daily life, yes. But we have the, like I, like I said, we have the completed text of scripture. We know what's coming. We know something. Why? Because we have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. So when our Lord says, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. We have the scriptures. But there again, think about it like this as well. You've been, you might be watching somebody here online or um, having fellowship with someone, and there's just that thing. There's that, um, something doesn't, doesn't, something's off, right? Something's off. It's like, ah, sounds good, but that, that, in time, the Lord can reveal that onto you through the scriptures and through that said person's actions or whatever, okay? That kind of revelation, absolutely. But remember, we have the complete, inerrant word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. We know what's coming. As far as, you know, the catching away in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? We know about the falling away, okay? These things we know. Why? Because they've been revealed to us in the scripture, okay? Therefore, whatsoever ye, uh, verse 3 in Luke chapter 12, 
Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 8. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 8. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Remember, for all their works that they do, they do to be seen of men. Look at me how pious I am. You know, doing the Hail Mary full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the womb. Making prayers like that. Okay, hold on. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Vain repetition. Catholic prayers. The uh, Hail Mary. The Rosary. The Catholic prayers that they have in the Missal and whatnot. That kind of stuff. That is the uh, vain repetition. It's not vain repetition for you daily to ask, Lord, please give me wisdom every day. Lord, please give me what I need to uh, abide in you. That's not vain repetition. Vain repetition are the prepared prayers of Catholics. Perfect example. And also, the Jewish people uh, in the synagogues also have prepared prayers. That's vain repetition. What? What? The the Hail Mary. They're supposed to say that what? Sometimes up to ten times a day uh, in one thing because of a penance that their Jesuit priest gave them in confession. Yeah, that's the vain repetition that he's talking about. Okay. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Then they ask us, like, well, why do you pray then, right? Right? These, this is a, an argument of the easy believism heretics. You, you devils have no concept of a relationship with a living God. Do you? How can you? How can you? Because you don't fear him. If you don't fear him, how can you love him? Okay? See, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? It's, it's communication. It's a relationship. It's a relationship between you and the living God. That's what the Lord wants. He wants a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with you. Okay? Hence, you speak with Him. You talk with Him through prayer. Being instant in prayer. Okay? Okay? He knows what you need. But He wants to have a relationship with you. Isn't that beautiful? The creator of heaven and earth wants to have a relationship with you personally. But there's a catch. Oh yeah, there is a catch. You don't come to him on your terms. You come to him on his terms. Okay? You come to him on his terms. Look at verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. 
verse 3 in Luke chapter 12. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. This will, this will tie it up for you very nicely. Beginning at verse 24 on to verse 27. Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 on to verse 27. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. That doesn't mean sinlessly perfect, O genius, by the way. Okay? Humble. Meek. Okay? Serving others. Serving others by first serving our Lord. Okay? And the servant as his Lord, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? <laughs> Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Now like I said, we have, we know what's coming in the future. We know what's coming. But our Lord will reveal truth to you through the scriptures. And also like I said, you could be having fellowship with people and there might be that eh, something is off in time. They always shoot themselves in the foot. The Lord will reveal things to you. Perfect example. You could be um, seeking a relationship with someone. And little by little, the Lord will uh, give little snippets of revelation about what that person, spirit, soul, body, is actually. Isn't that right? So yes, our Lord will reveal things to you through the scriptures, and also, like I said, in dealing with people, things will be revealed. Especially if you're, you're, you know, you're fellowshipping with someone or talking with someone. It's like they're saying all the right things, but it's like, okay, you got that, you got that kind of inkling, like, okay, sounds good, but there's something, there's something, there's something. There's something. Sooner or later. The Lord will reveal that unto you sooner or later, you see. The Lord's not going to keep us in darkness. And if he does, you know, doesn't reveal certain things unto us, that's his will, okay? He's not going to reveal every single solitary thing unto us, okay? But things that are needful for us to know, you do trust and believe that the Lord is going to let you know these things, Right? Right? If any man uh, lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to men liberally and abradeth not. But let him come in faith. Okay? Nothing wavering. You do believe that the Lord is going to answer you. Right? And if he doesn't, must mean that it's something that you don't need to know. Right? Our Lord knows what he's doing. Verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, okay, verse 3 in Luke 12. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Verse 27 in Matthew 10. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And verse uh, 3 in Luke 12. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Verse 27 of Matthew chapter 10. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon housetops. Aha, get it? Going to the Lord in prayer, having a communication with the living God. Hmm? Do you get it? The relationship with the living God. You see? Isn't that something? 
Praise the Lord. Now verse 4. Verse 4 in Luke chapter 12. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that and after that have no more that they can do. You know that's supposed to be taken literally, right? You know that, right? And I say unto you, my friends, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29, <laughs> verse 25. Just one verse to start here. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Fear of man bringeth a snare. What are you doing being afraid of a man? Hmm? The worst, the most they can do is kill you. But then again, you got to remember this too, brethren. When it comes on to the Jesuit, and they are the masters of torture, they've perfected torture because Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, and his army, the Jesuit order, they're all about the flesh. They live in the flesh. They're masters of flesh, pretty much. And you read uh, some of the stuff that Alberto Rivera said about some of the devices of torture that the Jesuits came up with, like uh, uh, stuffing a rag down someone's throat uh, with a drip of water at a time, like a, just grotesque. Like a, a rag being jammed down the throat to go all the way down, drip of water at a time for them to just go and yank it out. Whew! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Jesuit for you. That's the Jesuit for you. And you also got to remember too, the Jesuit knows that killing you would be, you know, a luxury to you. Once they get your hands, once they get their hands on you. But nevertheless, they can't hurt your soul. Can't hurt your soul. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Go to Psalm 39. Psalm 39. I read this one today. Psalm 39. Psalm 39, verses 4 on to verse 7. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. How frail I am. You know how frail I am? Very. Do you know how frail you are? Mr. Tough Guy? Very. And it's always interesting to me that these people who act like they're all this and, and so bold, but usually, well, I'm talking about those who are fake. Um, it's just a facade. It's just an act. Like the narcissist. They, they act as if they're all that to cover up their insecurities because they know how frail they are. And they want to put on this facade, this shoe, that there are something. I think the whole world revolves around them, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breath, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Salah your best state, buddy. 
at your best, your vanity. I, at my best, I'm vanity. At your best, <laughs> what about our worst, huh? <laughs> but at our best. And that's something? Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe who dances and struts his stuff upon the stage to be heard no more. It is the tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. That's William Shakespeare. Go check that out. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. My hope is in thee. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verses 3, on to verse 8. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Talking uh, about John the Baptist. Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. Valley, low people shall be exalted. The humble shall be exalted. Uh, mountain and hill, referencing unto people. The arrogant ones, the proud ones, shall be brought low. Okay, He who humbles himself shall be exalted, but him who exalts himself shall be abased. Get it? Okay. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. All flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth. Talking about flesh, by the way. Talking about flesh, by the way. <laughs> the flower fadeth. Because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. <laughs> the grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. See, those who exalt the flesh. Catholics and these covert uh, Jesuit coadjutors who like to exalt the flesh, to make the flesh holy, right? All flesh is grass. All flesh is sinful. Sinful flesh. Remember Romans 8, 1 through 3, you wicked devils. Where has sin been relegated to? The flesh. Oh, with these devils, yeah, it's well-ordered flesh, isn't it? But nevertheless, what does our Lord say? <clears throat> the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever.
Why fear we men? Why fear we men? Why? And, and, and Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Let's let the scripture answer that. Why fear we men? Okay? Isaiah 51, verses 12 and 13. Isaiah 51, verses 12 and 13. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And on the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass, which fadeth, and forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hath feared continually every day, because of the fury, fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? See, those of us of the church of the living God who have the Lord dwelling within us, and I'm speaking in context of witnessing. I, I, know, I know for a fact that there are some of you out there who are afraid to go up to people or do whatever or to put uh, tracks on cars or to stuff them in uh, <laughs> cereal boxes or put them into uh, pockets at uh, stores or whatever not on people but you know you go to a store where they got clothes and stuff you put them in the pocket really good thing to do I, and, and I, I, I get that that some of you are afraid now granted we do have to take in consideration brethren it's not the same in every nation under heaven Okay, in some nations, perhaps if they catch you going up to people talking about the Lord, witnessing, passing out tracts, you could face big repercussions. I get that, but are we supposed to fear the Lord or men? I get that. But see, we have the Lord in us. What, what do we got to be afraid of? A guy... A man who's going to die, just like we are. Why is that? Now, see, those of the devil, they try to, you know, they, they, they act like they're all brave and fearless. But then again, but then again, <laughs> it's, false, uh, it's a false courage. It's crazy brave. They're trying to put off this thing that they are so brave, but then again, they're going to whimper. They're going to break sooner or later because they have no fear of the Lord. And when the Lord, when they stand before the great white throne of judgment, these guys who are so brave, who claim to be Christians and are not of the church of the living God, their courage is going to go trickling down their leg. Beg your pardon for that example. Yeah, you think you're this tough guy, don't you? Yeah. Why don't you prove how tough you really are and turn on your Jesuit order? Why don't you do that, tough guy? Huh? Oh, well, they'll kill you, yeah. And they'll probably kill your family, too. So then, you Jesuit coadjutors, you're afraid of Sosa, not the Lord. You are most to be pitied. You really are. You really are. And go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 24 on to verse 29. Verse 4 and Luke chapter 12 again. And I say unto you, my friends, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that they have no more that they can do. 
Acts chapter 5, verses 24 and verse 29. Now when the high priest, uh, and by the way, Acts chapter 5, this is this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Um, the perfect atonement for sin was made. Hence, it's this dispensation. It went to the Jew first, but they rejected it in Acts chapter 7. And then Acts chapter 8, it goes to the Gentile. And we, the Gentile, brought into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. See. But, so this is this dispensation. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Now, there are those out there who will say, well, we're supposed to fear government and stuff like that. You know, we're supposed to obey government. Governments are in place of the Lord to judge evildoers. For example, the government here in America, which is headed by, Jesu by a Jesuit, uh, Kamala Harris, okay, she has been put in there to bring judgment upon this nation. But see, government is there to punish evildoers. And those who are evil are the ones who go against the scriptures, that live contrary to the scriptures. And you as a church of the living God, you live your life according to the scripture, you're going to be doing well. But then again, what is the time that we are living in? They are calling evil good and good evil. Okay? We are... Verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people. They feared the people. Uh, as I've heard it said, governments are supposed to fear their people, not the people fear their governments. Lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying... Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? Uh, haven't I warned you about putting tracks in on vehicles in the windshield wiper? Uh, haven't I? Haven't you been warned about putting uh, tracks in uh, coffee containers and cereal boxes and cracker boxes and those little Capri Sun things? Haven't, haven't you been warned about that? Haven't we told you not to do that? Hmm? Haven't you been warned to not speak the truth about the psychological operation? Hmm? That's contrary to Scripture. See, if a government and its laws are in complete contradiction to what God says, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hmm? Hmm. Here in America. You think here in America that the government in America is a godly government? With millions of abortions? With who knows how many children are murdered every day here in America via abortion? Think America's got godly government? Saying, Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And then Peter says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, you're right. We will obey what you say. We'll go contrary to what the scripture says and fear you, even though what you're telling us to do is in complete contradiction to the... Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God 
rather than men. Okay. Now see, we as the church of the living God, our lives have to be adhering to the scriptures. And who is that who will harm you when you do that which is good? And there is none good but one, that is God, right? So we have the Lord living within us who's going to lead us and guide us into all truth and tell us, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, stay away from that, hey, get away from that whack job, hush, do this, do that, okay? We live according to the scriptures. We are doing what is right in the Lord's eyes. And then, then again, the governments uh, today, this close to the redemption of the purchased possession, the governments are getting more wicked. They are calling evil good and good evil. You walk in accordance with the scripture that you may put the evil to shame by the way you behave. It's not that you um, are, are to walk um, totally contrary to government and uh, law. No, absolutely not. There again. When your government is telling you, as the church of the living God, what you can and cannot do with your own body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, when they make the steel of the Jesuit punyard mandatory, saying, you will do this. No, I will not. No, I will not. They have the right to tell you what you can do with the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Come on now. And, and now go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 32 on to close of the chapter. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 32 on to the close of the chapter. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who, through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. And your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Quench the violence of fire, Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my power is made perfect. Weakness. Wax valiant and fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Oh, you mean E.T., right? You see what the Jesuits have done to so many of these people, brethren? They see alien, right? No, they're talking those who are, are foreigners of different nations, not E.T. Okay. Women receive their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. You also got to remember, the book of Hebrews is written to who? Hebrews, for the Hebrews that are going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Just keep that in mind. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains 
and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Verse 4 in Luke chapter 12. Yeah. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Okay? Brethren, when it comes to witnessing, when it comes to being an ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ, you need to fear the Lord and not men. And go as he would guide you. Okay? I get it. Some of you are uncomfortable. It's like, hey, can I can I offer you a trap? You know? I, I understand that. Who are you afraid of? Him? The Lord. And from uh, as and as we started this video, um, the testimonies that I've gotten from so many of you <laughs> hold to this that yes. We fear the Lord, not man. Okay? We fear the Lord, not man. With that said, verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now see, the satanic trinitarian will come to this and say, he's talking about God the Father, because remember, there is one God made up of three persons. And a person is what? A spirit, soul, and body. So the Trinitarian will say, he's talking about God the Father, the first person of the Trinity. He's not talking about himself. Think, not, think about that. When a Trinitarian says that about verse 5, that he's talking about God the Father and not referring on to himself when Jesus himself clearly declares that he is the Father. Okay? They're demeaning our Lord. You're, you're being offensive unto our Lord Jesus Christ, Trinitarian, by making him the lesser when he is God the Father. Okay? He's making reference to himself. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Lord showed me this one. Oh no, actually, actually, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 18. Then we'll go to Jeremiah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 18. Okay? For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me. Wait. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people saying, you know, being holy, separate, other, saying, say ye not a confederacy to all them to, to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. And let him be your fear. And let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary. But a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. 
And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. So it says right here that we are to fear the Lord, to let him be our dread. Ah, ah. Wait a minute, those of you who might be saying, well, Paul never said, Sh shut up. Shut up. Okay? Go to Jeremiah chapter 5. We'll get there. Okay, we'll get there. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 19, on to verse 24. Jeremiah 5, verses 19 on to verse 24. And shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doth the Lord our God all these, wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers, in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. And to be foolish is what? To live, behave, as if there is no God. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord, will ye not tremble at my presence? Oh, you fake tough guys out there, you crazy brave. Yeah, think you're so tough. You're going to tremble one day. You know, it says in James, the devils also believe. Tremble. You're going to be trembling one day. Tough guy. Better to bow your knee now and come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite. And in fear of the Lord, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell, Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him for his mercy that he may forgive you and that the Lord may save you. Because remember, reading verse 22 again in Jeremiah chapter 5. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound, for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. See, you see the wind boisterous, right? The waves crashing in. Mm -hmm. These people, they roar. They threaten you. Try to divert you. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. But this people hath, hath a revolting and rebellious heart. Remember though, God knows your heart as you live as a devil. Yeah, God sure does know your heart, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart. <laughs> Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So, okay. Yeah, fear the Lord. Wow, what a concept. But, okay, now hold up, hold up, okay, hold up. There are those of you who are saying, well, we're not supposed to fear Jesus, right? And Paul never made any mention about fearing the Lord, right? 
You run into that one. That usually comes from these church building Christians. Usually. Usually. And you can tell by the way someone lives their life usually that where their fear of the Lord is. <laughs> okay. But go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Not 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 5 on to verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 5 on to verse 12. Now he that hath wrought up, now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Meaning the Lord lives within us. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? Himself. He's given us Himself. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. You like it down here? Huh? You like it down here? You're comfortable in your sin? Got to get all that sin in, right? Live your life as a total devil. Indulge in every sin under heaven, right? And then on your deathbed, you're going to do like your emperor Constantine, right? Who uh, on his, uh, near his death, uh, so-called repented and was baptized, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, very quickly on that. Very quickly like on that. Is a deathbed repentance and conversion possible? Anything is possible with the Lord. Yes, we have to admit to that. However, however, when you have someone who is walking, openly walking, contrary to the scriptures, not only openly, but knowingly walking contrary to the scriptures, who is there just to cause strife and division, to plant the seeds of division. Okay? Who has been around those who are of the church of the living God. An infiltrator. Who's been there, been around, saved brethren. But yet is a wicked devil. Knowingly and openly going contrary to the scriptures. God knows their hearts. Remember. Remember, God knows your heart. You're a devil. You behave like a devil. There's no change life. You're not saved. But God knows your heart. Yeah. Yeah. So, someone like that, who has this, who has clearly taken the scriptures and thrown them away, but all the while <laughs> saying they adhere to the scriptures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The odds on someone like that, on their deathbed, I don't think so. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? No. No. It's it's stacked quite against you, dear buddy. It's stacked quite against you. Especially since those of you out there who have already made your choice and are serving your father, the devil, and his mother, the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Doesn't look good for y'all. Let's continue. For we walk by faith. Not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, not to save ourselves, okay, not to stay saved. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of Him. Speaking of rewards, okay, accepted. See, if you're saved, you have the Lord in you, okay? You're going to heaven. 
He cannot deny himself. We're going to look at that too, by the way, just so you know. Okay? He cannot deny himself. You're saved. You're going to heaven. you got the Lord in you. You're going to heaven. Okay? But if you have the Lord in you and you're not going to live according to the scriptures as he would have you to, but just go willy-nilly, um, your life is in danger. If you have today, if you are truly saved of the church of the living God, but yet you're walking contrary to the scriptures and the Lord is in you, you need to repent and get right with the Lord. Or else, like in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, be handed over to the devil for the destruction of your precious flesh that your spirit may be saved? That's a big if. If these people are of the church of the living God who say they're Christians, but in works they deny him. Verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is for those who are saved. The great white throne of judgment is for those who are lost. Okay? That everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Read that on your own time. Okay? Perfect tie-in with this. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. The terror of the Lord. Terror. We're to be having terror of the Lord? That we're going to stand before Him? We, the church of the living God, at the judgment seat of Christ... Those of you wicked devils at the great white throne? Oh, but you tough guys, remember. Yeah, yeah. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The fear of the Lord is going to lead you to persuade men. The terror of the Lord. The terror. We persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest to your consciences. Uh, how, how far did I say we were going to read in this, by the way? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Uh, to verse 12. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance, you know, the facade of appearance, the flesh, and not in heart. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, go back to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 18 on to verse 21. And see, these easy believism heretics like to, they call themselves uh, dispensational. Okay? These hyper-grace are hyper-dispensational. Okay? They say they are dispensational, but they attribute uh, Romans 11 and especially Romans 10 are written for a different dispensation within the Pauline epistles within the book of Romans. Yeah, trying to avoid something there, buddy? Yeah. Uh, Romans chapter 11, verses 18 on to verse 21. Here's a big, big warning to these wicked um, replacement theology types. You know, they say they are Jews and they are not. Oh, oh, you don't say that you're a Jew, right? No, but the, uh, the great tribulation is for the purification of who? The church, right? That's what your father, the devil, and his church teaches. Yeah. Yeah. Big warning here. Verses 18 on to verse 21. Boast not against the branches. Again, he's talking to Gentiles. Okay? He's talking to Gentiles. Okay? Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, 
Thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. The branches, Israel, the Jew, the root. Salvation is of the Jews. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. God's done with the Jew. He's not the apple of the eye. We're, we're the elect, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by, standest by faith. Be not high-minded. Don't look at me. But fear. But fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. You gotta look, you know, if you read the Old Testament sometimes. Judges. Uh, first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, okay? Um, the Lord was very harsh to his people. But to whom much is given, much is required. You look at you look through the scriptures about what the Lord allowed to come upon his own people. What his own people went through because of their rejection of their Messiah. Case in point, the Holocaust. Okay? And we, as the church of the living God, <laughs> yeah, he did that to the apple of his eye. You think you're going to scoot away if you mess around with the Lord, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a healthy, it's a good thing to fear the Lord. Fear the Lord, that is wisdom. And depart from evil is understanding. Every single one of you coadjutor devils, there ain't no fear of the Lord in you. Say you fear the Lord? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. To you, the fear of the Lord is something that is printed on a page, not here. Because you do all these things to circumvent it. And you place your fear in your God. Sosa. You know, the black pope. The most powerful man on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 15 on verse 21. Big part, brethren. Paul never mentioned anything about the fear of the Lord. No, Paul wrote his epistles unto who? The church of the living God. The Pauline epistles is doctrine specifically for us today uh, in the time of the Gentiles, okay? Our main doctrines for us today are found within the Pauline epistles, Okay? Yes, there is other doctrines for us elsewhere within the New Testament, but primarily it's within the Pauline epistles. Okay? You don't just read the Pauline epistles and chuck the rest of Scripture. Okay? No, that's not how it works. Okay? But see, Paul spake through the Lord. Okay? The Lord guided him. Okay? The Lord was in him. Okay? But he spake in context of fearing the Lord. See, okay? Ephesians chapter 5. Okay? Because, I mean, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know? It's your reasonable service to not conform to this world. Why do you do that? Oh, fear of the Lord. You owe Him something that you can never pay. So it's your reasonable service to not be conformed to this world? What are you going to do? What, you going to fear men all your life? See that, uh, verse 15 on verse 21, Ephesians chapter 5. See then 
that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, fools who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, wisdom, wise, being wise is fearing the Lord. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. How are you doing at that, brother, sister? How are you redeeming the time? Sitting there playing video games, watching Hollywood movies, watching porn, listening to filthy music, especially contemporary Christian music. How are you redeeming the time? The days are evil. Every day is a gift. Every day is a precious gift because you are not promised tomorrow. I'm not promised the next five minutes, five seconds, and neither are you. We take that, we take that for granted, don't we? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And what is the will of the Lord? For those of us of the church of the living God. That we be separate. That we be his ambassadors. That we be vessels meet for the master's use. How do you do that? By separation. Being holy. Other than. Separate. Searching the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. How shall a young, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay? It, this isn't that difficult. But see, you've got the easy believers and devils who come in with, yea, have God said, and, may, and nitpick and make so difficult that which is so simple. And they say to us, those of us who are of the church of the living God, they say that we're the ones who are adding things. Yeah, yeah. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I remember a, a dearly, dearly beloved sister. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I'm going to mention it again. She, uh, she sent an email the one time about how she would sing psalms and hymns for hours on end to the point that those around her, around her who, were, who are lost would get grieved hearing hymns, singing songs unto the Lord. How are you going to do that with contemporary Christian music? Hmm. Good luck. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for all things unto God. That includes when things go well and when things go bad. That's hard to do sometimes, I know. <laughs> I know. And afterward, yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. There again, be it if it is for, if you're being chastened for something, but there again, Lord will let you go through some hardship or whatever to keep you focused on Him. You ever wondered why some of you might be ha going through some stuff? Have you taken your eyes off of our Lord Jesus Christ? Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In the fear of God. People like to say because... People like to say that Paul never really mentioned anything about the fear of the Lord, about fearing God. He wrote in the context of fearing the Lord. Okay? Of course he did. Of course.
course he did. Because if you don't fear the Lord, you don't love the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you're none of his. Okay? And very, very quickly, now let's read this uh, verse 5 again. Okay? But I will forewarn you in uh, Luke chapter 12. Excuse me. Verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Verses 17 and 18. And when I saw him, this is John the Apostle, you know, the one whom Jesus loved, the one who rested his head on the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, as dead, terrified. The disciple whom Jesus loved. The disciple who rested his head on the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. He fell at his feet as dead. And there are those out there thinking that uh, when they go to heaven, it's going to be this big, you know, bro hug kind of stuff. Those of you who think that, you really truly do think very little of the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially when you make him one of three persons. But... And when I saw him, verse 17 again, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Look at that. And have the keys of hell... And of death. Not Pope Peter. Not Francis. Especially not Sosa. No. The Lord has what? Has the key. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Verse 5 in Luke chapter 12. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, killed death, hath power to cast into hell. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. You got to remember, the Godhead, spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the word, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word made flesh. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Remember, we're made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the soul, God, the Father. The Word made flesh. The body. Okay? I'm going to put another uh, a video or two in here uh, proving that Jesus is God the Father, by the way, just so you know. Okay, but um, here in Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, um, our Lord Jesus, uh, if you have these in red words, the one I'm using right here does have red words in this. Um, that's our Lord Jesus Christ. And he has the keys of, he of hell and death. But yet, you got people saying that you shouldn't fear the Lord Jesus Christ. But God the Father you should fear. Wicked devils. Only a devil would say that. Because the devils want you to be comfortable in your sin. And they preach to you another Jesus. They preach to you another gospel. A totally different God. You know, the one God made of three persons. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Despicable nonsense. Despicable. Go back to uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. 
Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Psalm 84. Verse 1. Now you also got to remember. This is being said. Uh, he had yet to die. Bearing uh, raise again the third day according to the scripture. Perfect sacrifice for sin. The blood atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of God our Father that he shed on the cross was yet to be uh, given at this point when he uh, said this in Luke chapter 12. Okay, You do have to remember that. And in context, he as king would supernaturally, miraculously provide for his own. Okay, But, regardless, uh, Psalm 84, okay, that is something to keep in mind. Destruction and righteousness is what we're getting at here, people. Uh, Psalm 84. Psalm 84. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We groan. We want to go home. We long to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. But if we're here, we're here for a reason. What is that reason? Huh? Let's continue. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be still praising thee. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. You know, hiding the, his word in your heart that you might not sin against him. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength their own strength, unto the strength of the Lord. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun, S-U-N, and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, Blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. See, the Lord desires for us our sanctification, to be separate, holy. He wants to purify us, to cleanse our lives. Okay? Yes, we are going to sin daily. Okay? You know, we confess our sins, we go to the Lord in repentance, ask him his, our, his forgiveness for our sins. Okay? We're already saved of the church of the living God, but see, we are still going to sin. But our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, wants us to live holy, separate, other. Okay? And it says here, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. How do you walk uprightly? By the precepts of men? Or by, or by taking heed thereto according to thy word. God, again, God didn't save you, brother, sister, church of the living God. God doesn't save you to leave you wandering for you to come up with this stuff 
on your own by your own feelings. No. No. Don't you dare ever trust in your feelings. Huh. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Here is how you are to live. Written, it's written down for you. Go find it. Okay? And of course, go to Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to be reading what you might think. But nonetheless, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Don't fear men. Doesn't mean live flippantly without care of basic things. No, don't fear men. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And also, too, while we are here, look at verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ, riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Okay? But also now go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. See, he's not talking about living flippantly, you know, carelessly. Okay? No, no. He's talking about don't be afraid of men. Don't be afraid of men. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 on verse 7. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. <laughs> For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. How many of you devils are out there who claim to be Christian, but you're not of the church of the living God? Yeah. How many of you are walking contrary to this, by, while all the while hiding behind a facade that you're a Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Sure are, aren't you? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You know the Lord can and will provide for you, Church of the Living God. <laughs> My wife and I are testimony on. My God will provide all your need in his riches according to Christ Jesus. I know I did, we just read that and I bradized that, beg your pardon, but he will provide for your needs. Not your greeds, your needs. Are not five spirits, oh, back in Luke chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. He's going to take care of birds. Why, you don't think he's going to provide for you? Also, verse 8 and 9 now. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, 
Him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Now, we have to note something here. What he is saying here is a dispensational difference. What am I talking about? I'll show you. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Again, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Okay? Today, again, you are of the church of the living God. You are sealed. You cannot become unsealed. You are going to heaven. Okay? When our Lord here talks about, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Okay? But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Okay? This is a conditional thing here, which our Lord is speaking about. Okay? Today... We are sealed. We're going to heaven. We are eternally secure. During the kingdom of heaven, which is all by works, eternal security is not there in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is all works. Okay? The principle is the same. You know, you uh, deny uh, the Lord before men, uh, if you confess him, you'll get rewards, rewards in the kingdom of heaven. If you deny him, you'll be denied rewards in the kingdom of heaven. Your prayers will be not answered. Who knows? But see, this is a dispensational difference. The principle is the same. But dispensationally, doctrinally, they are different. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 13. This is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead unto the world, we shall also live with him. By his power. You know, uh, I am dead. Uh, hold your place here. You know where we're going. Right? Galatians, what chapter? Galatians 2. What verses? Uh, 20 and 21. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, something that we, could, we can do, then Christ is dead in vain. It is a faithful saying back in 2 Timothy, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. A kingdom of heaven inheritance, reigning with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now, again, Today, the time of the Gentiles, we are eternally secure. Okay? We're sealed. Once saved, always saved. You cannot become unsealed if you are truly of the church. Oh, beg me your pardon. If you are truly of the church of the living God. Okay? You cannot become unsealed. Okay? But here in Luke chapter 12, he talks about uh, denying before the angels of God. Okay? Conditional. Remembering that, number one, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He was speaking unto the Jews, offering unto the Jews, what? The kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on the earth at Jerusalem. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the things not seen. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. Hello, genius! Boop. The kingdom of heaven 
when God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is on earth reigning from Jerusalem on the throne, you're going to be able to see him. Okay? You're going to be able to see Jesus Christ right there during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You're going to be able to see him. You get it? So if you deny him when he is on the earth, get it? So when Paul here in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12, if we deny him, he also will deny us. That doesn't mean as pertaining to salvation. Rewards. You know, if any man builds anything on this uh, foundation, you know, wood, hay, stone, stuff that gets put up, uh, burned up, wood, hay, stubble, excuse me. That stuff gets burned up. Gold, silver can abide the fire, but wood, hay, and stubble goes up like a puff. If we deny him, he also will deny us. By rewards, might not answer a prayer that you've been having. Might deny some good thing because you might because you're not walking uprightly. You fear men instead of the Lord, so he might deny you in something. Get it? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Believe not. Meaning that you don't trust that the Lord's going to do what he said. Or that the Lord won't provide for you. Yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. See, when you are saved, sealed, born again of the church of the living God, he lives within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are part of his body. His body. His bones and his flesh. Meaning you are his. You belong to him. He can't deny himself. If you are part of his body. Get it? You get that, right? You are a part of his body. Hence you are part of him. He can't deny himself. So see, verse 13 proves that verse 12 is not talking about salvation because uh, it says in verse 12, if we deny him, he also will deny us. Well, wait a minute. If, it, if that means you can lose your salvation, then what is this? Then what do you do with this? He cannot deny himself. If we believe not, right? Because these easy believers and heretics, they're saved by their belief. What they do. You know, jumping over scriptural repentance, brokenness and contrition, fear of the Lord. They really hate calling upon the name of the Lord. Out, you know, you do that in fear of Him, okay? They really hate that. The lesser calling on the greater. But no, they're the greater because all of a sudden they're walking all along and they believe and whoop, they're saved, right? No. No. Watch out for those devils, man. Very wicked. No, no. If verse 12 says, means that you can lose your salvation, then yeah, you would have a contradiction. What is it talking about? It's talking about rewards, not answering a prayer, um, whatever it means, okay? Whatever it could be, okay? Kingdom of heaven, uh, rewards, not answering a prayer, okay? He cannot deny himself. We are of his bones and of his flesh. Whereas in Luke chapter 12, verses 8 and 9, okay, you deny the Lord while he is on the earth. Oh, you get it? But see, the principle is the same. What is that principle? Don't fear men. The Lord has called you to put down a track, to speak on to so-and-so. Don't deny the Lord before men. Or else would be ashamed of you. I'll give you an example. Those of you of the Church of the Living God who have the Lord in you, come on. Come on. Every one of us, pick your part. Every one of us, brethren, have had a moment where 
you know that the Lord is moving you, talk to this guy or talk to this gal, whatever it is. You, you'll know that the Lord has orchestrated a situation that he may be glorified through you as his ambassador. But for one reason or another, you don't. You deny him when he orchestrated a situation. But you decide to keep your mouth shut for whatever reason. Usually it's the fear of man because you don't want him be made to look like a fool for Christ's sake. So you keep your mouth shut. Then you walk away. And then that weight, that crushing, devouring weight within you. There are those of you out there of the Church of the Living God who know exactly what I'm talking about. Been there myself. You walk away. The Lord puts it on you. I devised that circumstance. And you blew it. I put that together. I wanted to use you. I put this all together. But you denied me. And see, as I know for certain, there are those of you youngsters out there to where that could be something very crushing, isn't it? You, I, I'm not going to name you, you know who you are. It doesn't mean you lost your salvation, son. Okay? Because if you are truly of the church of the living God, you're once saved, always saved. Okay, you, you might not, you might be missing out on a reward in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, some kind of calamity might come upon, whatever it may be. But it doesn't mean you lost your salvation. See, when the Lord sets something up and you know that it is of the Lord, and because you fear man, you walk away and he convicts you heavily, that can crush that can be very crushing to a lot of people, can it? Can it? You gotta remember the dispensational difference. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven, you deny the Lord, you're gonna be in big trouble. Today, you deny the Lord by not doing what he says in whatever capacity that is. You deny him by not uh, speaking when he gives you the audience to speak. Not doing when he said, put that track, put that track, put that tra What are you doing? I, I put this together. What are you doing? Doesn't mean you lost your salvation. Okay? Keep that in mind. But you shake yourself off. Go on to the next one. Okay? Because like I said, I, I know. <laughs> I know that there are those of you who have struggled with that. Okay? I get that. You've been in a situation. You've heard someone blaspheme the name of the Lord and you heard, have that burning within you. And you kept silent. Why? Because of fear of man. Fear of the consequence for standing up for the Lord. Well, I might lose my job. So what? So what? <laughs> How long do you think you're going to be holding on to that with what's coming, brethren? How long? How long do you think you got? Hmm? But like I said, turn away from that. When he put that circumstance together, yeah, that crushing weight on you. I, I know what that's like. I know that what that's like. Hey, Remember, Peter denied the Lord three times when the Lord said boldly, uh, you're going to deny me three times, Peter. And remember, 
Peter was not saved then. Oh! <laughs> was he? Wasn't converted. Was he? No. And the Lord looked at him after he denied him three times. And look what happened to Peter. Paul! Okay? Look at Paul. I rest my case. Don't let that defeat you. Because that's what the devil wants. Okay? Okay. Now, verse 10 in Luke chapter 12. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Now, a lot of people today want to say that this unpardonable sin can be committed today. No, it cannot. I have a video addressing that, okay? Blaspheming the Holy Ghost, okay? In context, the Holy Ghost was in the God, was part of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, okay? So, while Jesus Christ, God our Father, is on the earth, physically present, is the only time when someone can blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I have a video about that, about the unpardonable sin. Because people like to say, especially these charismatics, okay, when they start doing their blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, shut up with that. That's not scriptural. That's a devil. You're being devilish. They're like, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. The blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is only spoken of by our Lord Jesus Christ before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Meaning, it's applicable while he was present physically on the earth, at that time present there, and also, more specifically, when the king is on the throne in Jerusalem is when blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is something to be dreaded. Not today. Because, let's say, let's say, okay, let's say you could blaspheme the Holy Ghost today in this dispensation. Uh, the Lord clearly says that it shall not be forgiven. But you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, what does it say right here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So if you are of his body, of his bones and of his flesh, you know, the temple of the Holy Ghost, and which temple ye are, the Lord lives within you, and you could blaspheme the Holy Ghost, um, wouldn't that mean a contradiction? <laughs> yeah. Then what's, um, How come... Hey, you charismatics, how come your Pope Peter, when they said of him, these men are full of new wine, when he spake in actual different tongues, known languages, not your devilish blah, 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 none of that, no, actual known tongues, languages, okay? How come nowhere else except for the death, burial, and resurrection? How come nowhere else blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is never mentioned? Hmm? Why is that? Because it applies only when God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, is physically present. Okay? It's the only time that applies. It does not apply for today, dear friend. Don't let these Cara Catholic, Penta Catholic people scare you with that. You cannot blaspheme the Holy Ghost today. Okay? Why? Because the Lord Himself is in present. Okay? Like I said, I have a video addressing that specifically. I'll link it in the description box of this video, okay? Because that, we could spend a whole nother two hours on that. Okay, and we're already almost at two hours here in this video, so, okay.
okay? I'll link that video in the description box, okay? But now, verses 11 and 12 in Luke chapter 12. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Matthew chapter 10. Verses 16 on 2, verse 23. See how he did that? Matthew chapter 10. Verses 16 on to verse 23. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Remember, who is our Lord addressing here when he is saying this? Jews! Okay? You know, Hebrews. Let's continue. But when they deliver you up, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Now remember, these people who believe in a trinity, you know, which is satanic, they say that they believe in one God who is made of three divine persons. And a person, according to scripture, is a spirit, a soul, and a body. And so, for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Think about that for a second. Okay? This would, go, this would be one of the go-to verses for a Trinitarian. Because remember... Three persons make one God, but yet they believe in one God, but they're three persons. Look, I understand from the very inception of Roman Catholicism, the very inception of Satan's religion, they've put upon you the satanic trinity I get it, but it's not what the, t the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, it's not what the scriptures teach. Search the scriptures, whether these things be so. Let's get to it. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And um, we could be seeing that kind of thing happening today. Can't we? When it comes to the steel of the Jesuit punyard, right? Because these people are so willing to believe anything. Hey, <laughs> they could believe that this plague is the worst thing on the face of the earth that has ever been. Who knows? And hey, people are willing to believe that E.T. is out there. The lost world will believe almost anything. Except the truth. That there is one God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. They'll believe anything except the truth, right? Yeah. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Dispensational difference. Today, you and I, in this dispensation, people, we don't have to endure to the end. If we're absent from the body, hello, we're present with the Lord. Okay? 
We are eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, during the kingdom of heaven, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, 144,000 Jews are eternally secure. They're sealed. 144,000 of them are sealed. Yes. Other than that, uh, you take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. And that is exactly what these easy believism heretics and devils and coadjutors are preparing you people for. Because you just believe, and uh, because you just believe, you're saved, eternally secure, right? Because of, you just believe, no brokenness, contrition. Don't call on the name of the Lord. That's work, remember, according to these devils, right? Yeah. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to be telling you that. You take the mark and you're going to be damned to hell. That's what they're doing to four people. But see, when you have to endure to the end to be saved, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Not today. Okay? Not today, people. Our end of the Church of the Living God. The end of the Church of the Living God. Our time ends when we hear, Come up hither! And resurrected. Redeemed. Caught up. Okay? But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Okay? Now, go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Verses 1 on to verse 15 in John chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remember, these Christians in the church buildings, right, who are promoting, take the steel of the Jesuit poniard, because it's for the common good. If you're a Christian, you would be concerned for other people, and you would get your a sure death sentence in the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and those of us who have a brain and refuse a sure death sentence as that come after us thinking that they're doing God's service. Yeah. yeah. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. One and the same. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the capital C, Comforter, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And elsewhere he says, the Father will send him unto you. And right here he says, I will send him unto you. People will say, well, that's a contradiction. Uh, no, no, no it isn't. Because there is only one God who, which is comprised of a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? It's, it's simple. They're one and the same. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God the Father. They're the same, okay? 
It's not that hard. Okay. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. The Lord in you. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do this. Okay. And righteousness and of judgment. Oh. Judgment. Yeah. We are to judge as the church of the living God. We, we know this. You know why? Because we have a, a standard on which we can judge ourselves and that of others and of the world. Okay? Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judge. And who is the prince of this world? Lucifer. That old serpent, the devil, Satan. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He will reveal things to you. Searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Studying, to show yourself approved unto God, that you are be a workman who deemeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Reveal truth to you. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stay away from that guy. If something don't seem right, I'll show it to you in a little bit. Okay? He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath of mine, because they are one and the same. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Again, Jesus is the Father. Okay? Okay? And of course, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 13. See how we did that? Went to the close of the chapter in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 13. Went to the close of the chapter. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. For what does Paul say uh, elsewhere in the uh, book of 1 Corinthians, I believe it is, or here in 2 Corinthians offhand, I can't remember. He says, I, deter I am determined to know nothing among you save Christ and him crucified, meaning knowing who is of the church of the living God and who is not. Okay, We want to have fellowship with our own, those who are saved, born again, converted. Okay, get it? Let's continue. Okay. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if, circle that, you know, go ahead, get your pen, and circle the if, okay? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, we're, cre we're the creature, by the way. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
<laughs> and, and, and very quickly, look at verse, look at verse 15. You look at verse 15, okay? These devils, it's like, oh, your life doesn't have to change. You're saved, okay? They dispute a changed life because they're not saved themselves who dispute change life. But remember, <laughs> God knows your heart. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, all things are become new, but it's an option. You, you live like a devil. You are a devil, but yet, God knows your heart. <laughs> Bravo, genius. Good luck. <laughs> And all things are, are of God. Sorry. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us, those who are saved of the church of the living God, the ministry of reconciliation. <gasps> oh, so, okay. If we're to be ministers of reconciliation, it matters how we live then, doesn't it? Because, okay, you, you say you're a Christian because you just believe, right? But yet, you live exactly as the lost world, and in some of your cases, worse than the lost world. <laughs> and you're, you're a minister of reconciliation, huh? You're his ambassador. I think perhaps maybe no. and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, ministry of reconciliation. Every single one of you of the church of the living God, doesn't matter who you are, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Not something that you speak in some satanic, devilish, gibberish, blah, 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 blah. No. The word of reconciliation. The scriptures. Okay? Now then, <laughs> we are ambassadors for Christ. You, you easy believism devils. Remember, God knows your heart. Remember, yeah. You're his ambassador. <laughs> what kind of example are you leading there, buddy boy? Hmm? Yeah. Big part. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. And here is something that is absolutely impossible for someone who is not of the church of the living God, because the things of the Spirit are foolishness unto them, because they are spiritually discerned, you know. Um, they can't get this. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Imputed righteousness. Okay. Imputed righteousness. You easy believers and devils, you're righteous, you have your own righteousness because you believe. Never mind our Lord's conditions, brokenness and contrition. Oh, you hate that. You especially hate that calling upon the name of the Lord, don't you? Yeah, sure do. You sure do. And of course, let's finish this with 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Not 2 Peter, take your part. 
First Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, notice something very quickly about this verse. It, it does not say to give an answer to every man that asketh you any question. No. Because remember, we are to avoid foolish and unlearned questions, which unfortunately, I get quite a few of those. You know, rhetorical questions asked, not to get an actual scriptural response, but just there to make a statement and cause offense. It does not say, this is where that stupid apologetics thing comes in. Like, we're to apologize to people for walking according to the scriptures? Sir, no. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. It's not telling you to answer every single solitary question that is presented to you. Okay? Now, those of the Church of the Living God who have asked questions, I, 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 Lord willing, I'll, I'll get to them. Okay? But, okay, there, like I said, there are those who will ask you questions that are foolish and unlearned, meant to cause strife and debate. We are to give people a reason for the hope that is in us. Not to explain every single thing. Do remember that. Having a good conscience. A good conscience. That whereas they speak evil of you, <laughs> I, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. And oh yeah, the, the more you ignore them, the more you let them run their mouth and do what they do, oh, it drives them crazy. Drives them crazy, doesn't it? Verses 11 and 12 in Luke chapter 12. And when ye and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And you give every man a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This stuff doesn't scare you what's going on? No, because I know if I die. I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear the things of the world. The fear of man. But of, a, a, but of love. And of a sound mind. Okay? The Lord, want, we are to fear the Lord. We are not to fear man. Okay? If you walk contrary to the scriptures and they are doing things that are against the law, contrary to the scriptures, perfect example, you're out there robbing people, stealing, uh, uh, give me neither riches nor poverty that I don't steal, take the name of my Lord in vain. Or, or give me riches that I become self-sufficient and say, who is the Lord? That was Brad, I beg your pardon. Okay? You get it? I hope so. I hope so. It's going to be it for this video. Just a little something that I wanted us to go through. And, and then again, I, um, I know that there are some of you who have struggled with being afraid of men, especially in your witnessing. But then again, a lot of you, have, the Lord is using for his glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this will help edify some of you, Lord willing, that's the hope. Um, thank you. Thank you, Church of the Living God, our brothers and sisters. We love you all so very, very much, and we pray for so many of you. Uh, today is Thursday. Um, this weekend, I'm uh, going to try to get a hold of people via, you know, telephone. Um, uh, this weekend, Lord willing, going to try to get a hold of a beloved brother and sister. And also, there are other people that um, uh, we hope. And when I say we, uh, be aware, all of you whose phone numbers uh, we have, um, you're going to... My wife and I are one flesh, okay? You might say, well, can I speak to you privately? It's like you are. But your wife is there. Yeah, but we're one flesh, see. It's a package deal. So when, you, when we call you or get a hold of you over the phone, um, my wife is going to be with me because we're one flesh. And uh, you're going to be talking to us, so you know. But we are going to be trying to get a hold of some, uh, a few of you not all at once, or, you know, not in one day, you know, this day, this day, this day. But we're going to try to be getting hold of uh, a few of you, brethren and sisters, uh, you know, brother and sister, over the phone uh, this weekend, okay, this uh, the remainder of this week. So, but anyway, thank you again, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. And praise the Lord for every single one of you. Uh, for your charity, for your mercy, for your kindness, for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us as we pray for so many of you. Okay? And thank you. Thank you, brother. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we'll see you in the next video.